Welcome my friends back to Marvel Snap. Today we are coming at you with an incredible self-discard synergy list. This one has an insanely high ceiling. You can both stack tremendous power on a single location, but also be able to spread your pressure wide across the board. Let's break it down. We are calling this list Count Locula, combining Lockjaw with Dracula in our discard synergies list here. Now, at the end of the video, we're going to talk about making a more budget-friendly version of the list. This is going deep into pool three with a lot of different synergies here. It is considered at the top of the meta as one of the infinite lists, stamp of approval, etc., etc. Now, Lockjaw is the unique adaptation here. When you play a card here, swap it with a card from your deck. The way this works is a card played to Lockjaw's location will reveal, trigger its reveal ability, and then get shuffled back into the deck. Lockjaw will pull a random card other than the card that got shuffled in, um, and then that card will be able to flip with its on reveal ability. And because the discard list is very on reveal heavy, we're using Lockjaw to be able to get repeat triggers, potentially fish in the deck for something that we haven't been able to find in our hand. There's a lot of fun cases for Lockjaw here. And I mean, just the, the outright ability of playing Lockjaw and then playing Blade to Lockjaw. So Blade discards something from hand, hopefully it's beneficial. And then Lockjaw shuffles Blade back in, pulls maybe a random Moon Knight. We get a second discard ability. Then we can redraw the Blade, which is a very cheap uh, engine piece activator for us to be able to play yet again and let the cycle continue. All of the top tier discard lists want a way to be able to reactivate the on reveal abilities of the cards to be able to really scale the apocalypse, also really scale the Morbius. Morbius gaining plus two power ongoing for each card discarded this game. In pool three here, we can see incredible power out of the Morbius. And then of course the apocalypse, when you discard this from your hand, put it back with plus four power. Now, another key here is the Dracula, a four power card at the end of the game. Discard a card from your hand, is a random discard, and then Dracula will take on that card's power. If he discards the Apocalypse, which is the ideal target, the Apocalypse will grow, and then Dracula will take on the final power of the Apocalypse. So we get yet one more activation of strengthening the Apocalypse and also the Morbius. In fact, if we just play the Dracula and don't get any other discards on the Apocalypse, and then at the end of the game, Dracula is still able to consume the Apocalypse. Apocalypse is going to be 12 strength. That's the efficiency of Hulk, but it is also going to be able to scale the Morbius, and it came to the board only through a 4 cost, which is why Dracula is so insane. A great alternate target for the Dracula is the America Chavez. We're guaranteed to receive her on turn 6, so there's always going to be something large enough in hand to make it worth it to play the Dracula early on. Also, Chavez is brilliant here for Lockjaw to be able to cheat her out to the board. Um, a very high stat line. So you can play one of your cards with a good on reveal ability, get the benefit of the on reveal ability, but then get the benefit of Chavez's stats later on. And this is how the list can really pop off when you get these kind of situations. The rest of our cards here are looking at the discard. Well, we have one other target that wants to be discarded, which is the swarm. When this is discarded from your hand, add two copies that cost zero to your hand. Beautiful for being able to put the wide pressure on the board. Some people like to be able to run Bishop if you are really leaning into the swarm. This list has gone ahead and thinned out Bishop, uh, but that is definitely an adaptation you can make for the more budget-friendly list. Also, if you get some discards on the swarm early, they become free and could then be played to Lockjaw's location to come back with more powerful cards from the deck, and then you can redraw the free cards of swarm later on. Oh, I, I just love that synergy right there. We have the blade, of course, 1-3, discard a random card. Colleen Wing, 2-4, brilliant stat line on reveal. Discard the lowest cost card in your hand. We want this to be able to hit the swarm every single time, so we want to get Morbius and Blade out of the way for that. Moon Knight causing us to discard a card, and then the opponent to discard a card. Very powerful control against them. Lady Sif, married to the Apocalypse, guaranteed to discard the highest cost card from hand. Swordmaster, we're using him for the stat line, so we're not using Gambit. Gambit is very uh, inconsistent. He is a 3-1. He discards a random card and then destroys a random opponent's card. You could tech that in if you like being able to lean into the Gambit high roll, but this consistency of the 3-6 stat line out of the Swordmaster is more desirable here. We've already covered the Dracula at the 4 cost price point. We also have Hellcow. <laughs> On reveal, discard two cards from your hand. I'm sorry, I always laugh at looking at Hellcow. Just the idea that Marvel made this as a character is hilarious, but Hellcow is very solid for being able to get those extra discard activations. 
Diving into battle to be able to showcase what the deck can do, we immediately get the Dracula discarded. If only we could have hit a desirable discard card. So now we're running just Lockjaw. Uh, is this going to be enough? We will have to find out. Murder World locking out part of the board. Hanging on to the Swarm, of course. We want this to be discarded. It's a great target for us. We have the deck list up above. If you want to talk card substitutions, deck optimization, you can leave me a comment down below. Read all the comments and love chatting. Everything snap down there. We're going to go Lockjaw. Hope to be able to play the Moon Knight Blade together next. The stat line on the Moon Knight is not great to be able to see on the board, but his ability is really what we're playing him for. Drawing the Apocalypse is so good for us here. The Blade as well. Hopefully, we can draw out the Chavez for a solid stat line, or hopefully we can pull up the Hell Cow to get some just dice up the Apocalypse. Teeny, teeny, tiny. The uh, Morbius is also actually very desirable. For a two-cost card, Morbius is mind-blowing. The whole discard suite of cards. They take quite a long time to be able to collect because so many of them are pool three. But once you're able to start bringing them all together, the opponent losing arrow here is very solid for us. Lady Sift, better stat line than the Moon Knight. Yet another discard on the Apocalypse. He's already a 16 strength. I mean, we could be looking at an infinite power apocalypse. Talking about characters that live up to their comic book um, pedigree, Apocalypse is there. Apocalypse is incredible. Um, do we want to go with the Hell Cow? This list, I highly recommend having a picture of your deck next to you somewhere while playing because you need to know what is in the deck for you to be able to acquire. The Hell Cow will trade out here, maybe to redraw the Moon Knight, maybe to bring back the Blade, Morbius, Colleen Wing. We've already lost the Dracula, and these are our options. Most of these have weaker stat lines than the Hell Cow, but getting an extra discard activation could be exactly what we want um, just to fuel us into turn six because we're going to be playing the Apocalypse and the Swarm. We lost the Dracula, so we can't play more discard effects on turn six, which is what we really want to do. Having the Dracula on board will allow you to keep on playing discard effects into turn six because you know the Dracula at the end of it is going to be able to eat the Apocalypse or whatever you have left in hand. There can actually be a problem <laughs> of having so many swarms in hand. Oh, we force them off. Brilliance. There's actually a problem of having so many swarms in hand that if they don't all get to the board, or the board is cluttered from some other effect, the Dracula might eat the swarm. And then we'd be, we'd be quite sad. But hopefully that's in a board situation where we're still ahead. Jumping into another one here and really looking to be able to find our Dracula. If you guys enjoy these deck guides and show some love to the video, I can help you guys win the game of Snap. You guys can help me win the game of YouTube by showing some support, liking the video, leaving comments down below. That all helps promote it to the rest of the community. Want to be able to give the game the attention that it so justly deserves. We play the Lady Sif here. Starlight Citadel shuffling things. I would hate that Sanctum Sanctorum to move over to the Dark Dimension location and then lock us out, but... We should be able to win two locations at the end of this. I get the Morbius. Do I want to... Ah, oh, I want to play Dracula. Yeah, we'll play Dracula and we'll show some love to both locations. So we at least have some small pressure. I play the Warpath. Sanctum Sanctorum locks down. Okay. They played these cards very early. I don't think it possibly competes with Dracula's Might. But now we need... We'll hide Morbius. We don't care. He doesn't have to see the discards happen. He just gets credit for them. He just looks um, up here to be able to see how many you've discarded over the course of the entire game. Unlike the Collector, which is fantastic. And it was a, a nuance that I was not necessarily um, expecting when I first started playing him. We can play the Swordmaster for a random. We can play the Colleen Wing specifically for Swarm. I don't mind Swarm not getting hit. I don't have a lot of board space to be able to play the free Swarms. This is a, one of the cases of too many Swarms. So we'll hold the Colleen Wing. If the Colleen Wing gets hit, that's fine. Ah, the Cosmo. Cosmo is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere right now. One of the most popular cards. Swordmaster doesn't even trigger. Yikes. Now Dark Dimension is going to flip, and then Dracula will discard. So, how do we want to line it up? I'm a little worried here. 
Because if I play the Colleen Wing, she hits the Swarm. Don't want her to really hit that Swarm. I could play the Swarm instead and hope that the Hell Cow thins through Colleen Wing, especially so Dracula's not hitting the Colleen Wing. That's the, uh, that's the death sentence. Because as long as Dracula is able to pick up the... Well, hang on. The opponent's playing a Spectrum list, right? The Spectrum comes in, is able to buff them up, so we have to hit the Apocalypse to win. And then the Spectrum coming in here is going to be plus 5, um, plus 7 on the Warpath, up to 12. Yeah. Alright, this is heart of the cards. On the, the discard lists, sometimes you just have to be able to play your odds, line up your cards, see how they fall. Cutting Kali Wig, perfect. And now the Chavez. Okay, we hit the Apocalypse, so it's a 50-50 on the Dracula. We'll get the Swarm out of the way. <laughs> always, we always had it under control, my friends. Always had it under control. <laughs> As shown so eloquently by the fact that I did not snap. I love it. Wakandan Embassy, giving us a nice buff. Now, the buff is wasted on the Dracula. I'm not going to play the Blade. Blade's a combo piece. You want to hold him, you don't play him for temporarily, even with the 1-5. 1-5 stat line, which is amazing. We're going to set up the Lockjaw, then set up the Dracula, then ease into how we want to be able to play this out. Having the Apocalypse in hand already is fantastic. This is one of the reasons that we're running Chavez. It just gives us a fractionally higher percentage chance of drawing the pieces that we want to combo in together early. Now, if you guys have some spicy deck lists or something that you just think that it would be fun to, to see me try on a video, if they're really interesting, I would especially love to see them if they're very creative, something that you don't see a lot on the ladder, but you've been having good success with, let me know. I have the Discord channel that is now set up. The link is in the description. It's a great place to hang out anyway if you just want to, to hang out, not necessarily to be able to share decks. Um, would love to see you guys over there. Starlight Citadel. Going to swap the positions of locations. Right now, it doesn't matter uh, until we see this third location. The discard list, you have to get very comfortable with just dry passing on some odd turns even. If the hand is not where you want it to have discard effects randomly affecting it, then just pass. It is completely fine to do. Murder World. Okay, it's going to go off before Starlight Citadel messes us up. We're going to go ahead and run the Lockjaw up against their cable. Lockjaw usually ends up producing fairly high power at his location. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about um, how much he's going to have ready there and lined up. Let's see. Now we want to set up our Dracula. Dracula will oppose the bishop. With him established, that opens up turn six just to be able to run the discard effects and thin through down to the apocalypse. Hopefully we're not running the 50-50 like the last game and we have a little bit more assurance to be able to snap now, if we're holding the combo in hand, the discard list is somewhat predictable for the opponent because they get full information when you discard cards, they see what they are. When you discard Apocalypse, they see how big it is, uh, meaning that they can very easily, well, if they're keeping track, which most people towards playing seriously on the ranked ladder are, um, they're going to be able to expect what you can produce in terms of power on the final turn. I'm going to play the Blade. Blade's a 1-5. Do I really want it getting shuffled with the Lockjaw? Because then I don't get to preserve his power. It does give me one more opportunity to be able to redraw him. I want to play the Morbius. And then this Colleen Wing is going to hit my Moon Knight. I could just play the Moon Knight to be able to discard something from their hand. I kind of like having the Moon Knight to be able to hit them. They're playing some kind of Devil Dino mess. I'll play the Morbius, I'll play the Moon Knight. Yeah, let's see what we hit. Rolling into turn 6, we could be looking at playing Hellcow plus Blade, both to Lockjaw, then cycling in more discard effects. Thus, it would bypass the Calling Wing, we just hope that one of those effects would take her out. And we would hope that on the reshuffle, we would, or from the, the resummon from the Lockjaw, that we would be able to pull in uh, another Moon Knight, the um, Swordmaster, something like this. Okay, so they're running Bishop plus Devil Dinosaur up against our Dracula. Unfortunately for them, I don't think it's going to get them where they need to be. We go Hellcow Blade here. So it's three discard effects, and then we're reshuffling. Checking our deck, two cards in deck. They are Moon Knight, Swordmaster, giving us the extra effects. 
We snap. Morbius is gonna pop off. This location is gonna pop off. Dracula is gonna pop off. The opponent has double devil dinosaur. It's the classic. It's the pool two dreaded hand size deck. The moon girl was able to copy it. Maybe they're even holding the agent 13 in hand to be able to play alongside the devil dinosaur and then buff both the devil dinosaurs. Six cards in hand. It would give them yeah. It would give them the six card uh, six card play. But the Moon Knight almost has to come back up. It doesn't have to. Technically, it doesn't have to. But very high odds that we re get, we regain. The, you're playing the Sword Master to the detriment of your Devil Dinosaur, my friend. You thought that this was the the power that you wanted. To, this was not what you were looking for. Colin Wing out of the way. America Chavez out of the way immediately. This is perfect. Moon Knight comes up. <laughs> It decreases the double dinosaur even more. Oh, this deck is so good. Yeah, the Moon Knight, the Moon Knight especially is one of the real highlights in terms of cards that the discard suite has that you would play into other decks. The control against the opponent, making them discard a card is just so powerful. And look at look at Morbius. Morbius is sitting at a 14 strength. I played I paid two energy for Morbius. All the other discard cards are close to tempo. This list produces so much power. Okay, now let's talk about budget versions of the list. So over here we have our pool two discard list. We have the Morbius, he's not got a lot of activations, so he's extremely, uh, he's significantly weaker. We have the Collector who's able to scale based on discarding either the Swarm or the Apocalypse. We have Bride of the Wolverine because he has just a hint of synergy. If he gets discarded, he can be played for free. And then we had enough flex slots to be able to run the Nova Killmonger duo. If we kill the blade, so be it. We can get distributed buffs, which is actually very good if we have a couple swarm copies down there on the board. Now, as you're looking to be able to upgrade this into pool three, but even if you don't have all the pieces for the uh, the Count Locula pit, bit, then you are dropping the Nova Killmonger and you want to get rid of Wolverine as soon as you can. Now, there's a bunch of cards that are going to be able to cause the discard activation that are new. You have the Moon Knight, the Gambit, and the Hell Cow. You're going to want to be able to run one of these into this flex slot. Next, you have cards that are going to allow you to repeat the on-reveal abilities. We're looking at Wong, Beast and Lockjaw. All three of these are great. They can be incorporated in different ways. If you're running the Collector, I especially recommend using Beast if you have him. Also, if you're able to find the Dracula, then you can play Odin as well. As a big finisher, Odin can swing in and then repeat all of the discard activations on a single stack to be able to thin things down for the Dracula to be able to consume the Apocalypse. We have titled the video with Dracula on it. So we're gonna run the version of Dracula Odin combo. Now, of course, if you don't have the Dracula, don't necessarily let that discourage you from running this list. If you've been pulling in some of the other discard synergies, you can still really make this list sing and produce a lot of power onto that huge apocalypse. We're gonna give this one a run. Oh, and I forgot to mention Colleen Wing. Colleen Wing is great here as another slot alongside either the Moon Knight Gambit or the Hell Cow. Dream Dimension appears, we have the Blade. We don't want to play Blade early, as I said earlier. Combo piece. I've been playing a couple games here trying to find a good showcase for this version of the deck. It's not nearly as consistent as the Lockjaw list, but it can still punch very hard. We set up our Morbius here. I've, I'm pretty happy with this line. Honestly, oh, the, uh, the Apocalypse is perfect. I just have to be able to find the Dracula now. We're gonna go Moon Knight. We can, of course, Odin can take a stray and get clipped. This is just uh, a sacrifice that we are willing to make. We want to be able to stack one lane with our discard activations. We're gonna be scaling the Morbius on the side, develop the Dracula on Monster Metropolis, ideally. Maybe Collector, maybe Bishop. The fact that they had to lose the Spectrum here is fantastic for us, and we get that knowledge. Very pivotal. Pivotal. I'll play Bishop. I mean, Bishop will be able to outscale the Mr. Fantastic. The question is, does the opponent also run Spectrum Destroyer? And do they have the Destroyer? They lost the Spectrum. They could still have um, Cosmo to make the appearance and then play Destroyer behind that, or 
armor, Professor X, etc, etc. Isle of Silence is really protecting us a lot. Cosmo does shut the deck down, being able to... Um, I'm not sure they realized that the armor was going to get turned off there. I think the opponent did not understand how that was going to work. Okay. I have my pick. Swordmaster or Dra It has to be Dracula. That's the whole point. <laughs> Swordmaster, I'm sorry, you're not getting played. Now they have the Cosmo. Interesting, interesting. So you're going to try and play... I'm sorry, what's the game plan? You're playing Destroyer here to Monster Metropolis? I'll play the Odin. Odin coming in, Moon Knight gets the random discard, then Dracula gets the random discard. It does put us over at Isle of Silence. We effectively got what we wanted. And the Claw. Buffs them up. Morbius now ties. Dracula will put us over. We take the Chavez. But that gives us the plus three for the Monster Metropolis, and we take the win. Ooh. There we are, a little bit shaky, but it still can come through. Here is the deck list in all of its glory. I love it when the discard synergies really come together. It's incredibly fun to be able to pilot. You guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments how the decks serve you if you guys give them a try. Till next time, thank you guys for watching. Keep on snapping.